as you can see, I've cleaned my palette off and consolidated some of the colors. And um, I've had a chance to, to step back and decide, okay, we need, we need some more information about the, I like the, the wires and the telephone poles and I don't wanna to wait too long to get that in. And I do something that's called a, a solvent path for if I have this ma mass of shapes going on here, I'll, let's put, uh, I'll do right, I think it's about right here. I'm gonna put this in and I just lift off. I'm gonna do the same thing back here. And that just gets me down to the raw canvas. And as things go back in the distance, they're, they're not as dark. Got to keep that in mind. If you need to, to kind of get more of a straight line, you can always brace, your, brace yourself like this. Some people use what is called a mall stick. I don't have that. If you have your pre-mixed colors, you can always paint right around something. Uh, I want to show you how, how I would do that. Get the idea there that you can, you can actually paint right up to the edge of something. I'll come back to that. So now I'm trying essentially just looking for colors that are lighter and more, uh, maybe a little more pure. Refine the drawing a bit. And by pre-mixing your color, you can, you don't have to create entirely new colors every time. You can, you can reach into the parent color and any, any of the primaries up here for variations on the theme. That's what I like about this is these, I don't have to try to figure out a new, a new color every time. So in that sense, it does save it does save some time mixing and experimenting.
you can see as, as time goes on, I'm going to reach for a smaller brush for more detail. If you're a beginner painter, just keep in mind that value, the lightness or darkness of a color, is much more important than, than actual color. The value is, is way important. It, it trumps the color almost in some ways. It's, it, uh, color gets all the credit, but value does all the work. It's, it's the way I see it. Some really interesting uh, variations to the to the darks, to the dark colors here. Oh my gosh, it's and if you want to get a clean a clean dark color, you might have to get wipe off an area. See, I'm going for a real clean dark right here. That's, that's almost a focal, I would say, a focal point. We have some windows here. This might get boring to watch after a while, but it's it's really important to get this get these values right, especially in the shadow family. With painting a mill, it's, it's not like painting a bouquet of flowers. We've got some really dirty, interesting color combinations here. So I'm using red to, to mix with, uh, with the green uh, to, give me, to get some dirty, dirty neutrals. Call them dirty, but I actually think they're kind of interesting. You don't want to get too caught up in too much detail here because it's it'll it'll suck you into that. You know, like that's so interesting you could work on that all day, but we don't have all day. Because the light will change, then it'll, it's a completely different animal. Water's low, and so we're getting an interesting contrast of of like a of that gray from the sky kind of a pinkish violet almost that's reflecting into that water so it's the sky color uh, this is this is kind of interesting to note that that darks reflect lighter into water and lights reflect darker Not a lot of people think about that, but it's really important when you're painting. You can see how I'm lightening up this, this water, making it reflect the sky color in here. I think this is adding a lot to the painting. Again, from dark, to light, from thin passages to thicker passages. 
So if I'm painting something in the in the winter time, uh, the lighter or passages would probably be snow, and that would be the most thickly painted. Here we go. I, I, I kind of like that. It helps achieve this this feeling of depth that we were after. It's kind of an S curve. It goes back. At some point, and I'm just testing out this idea of the of the of these rocks that are that are uh, getting this. It's kind of a orange, orangey color. It's some nice contrast, isn't it, to to everything else? Light against dark, uh, warm against cold. Those are those are things you think about when as you're painting. So you want to work the painting all at one time. Don't get don't get caught up in any one area for too long. That, then it looks like too, too many people worked on the painting, not just one. You want to make it look like the wind blew it on. I know that sounds crazy, but it's like all at one, all at one time. It's, all of Prima is what you hear, and that, it's done. That means all at once. And that's what we're doing today. Okay, let's let's move to this. Yeah, the leaves are changing color here. So I'm going to introduce some of the warm reds and oranges. Once you got that foundation down, it's 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 easier to to start finding the smaller shapes. Now here, this gets tricky back there because it's 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 grayed down. The color's grayed, right? It's it's clearly in the distance. That's why I mixed an entirely different batch of colors for back there. Couldn't, you almost can't do that without squinting your eyes and just consolidating the color, the light and shadow families. And there's a slight amount of shadow on, you know, on the on the trees as they, in between them. Well, that was that up there indicates the incline. What would Johnstown be without the incline? That's cheating a little bit, but...
hints, hints of autumn. rocks up in the side of the mountain there and as a painter you're looking and thinking well you know there's 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 some violet in there which contrasts nicely with these uh, with the warm yellow down here so that's an opportunity to, to add some some contrast and color to down here which is gonna make that area sing. happening over here is we've got uh, some strong verticals You have to be careful about painting shadows because what happens is if you get them too light, then it destroys the, the contrast. You might wonder why this size canvas. Well, I, when I showed you the, the image of the that I'm, I started from, the um, the photograph, it was approximately this kind of a proportion. These, so you got to keep in mind you want that to be that to influence the the scale and the proportion of the painting. Okay. I'm, We're getting, we're getting a, a nice light on top of this bank. Here, let's wipe that off.
Okay, I'm going to just take a a short break, clean my palate, and and then uh, kind of go into the to the what I consider the the final pass of of the painting. 